Hi guys, excited to talk to you today. Uh, I don't know what that was. I saw that a lot of you guys really enjoyed when I looked through my admissions file. I actually got a bunch of you messaging me on Instagram and commenting on videos, asking about my stats and my extracurriculars. So I just thought it would be a really good idea to go through that. I have my comment app right here and I will be including screenshots as we go. Definitely follow me on Instagram. It's right here. And I have been responding to all the messages that I've been getting since I restarted my YouTube. So if you reach out there with a very specific question, I will definitely respond but you can also comment down below and subscribe and like so that you get all of this college goodness too let's just get right into it the first thing that you'll do is just fill in a bunch of information about yourself like your birthday your address your name you'll have to put down your race demographics as well i think that they factor that in and that's actually really important these days because COVID is actually going into a lawsuit for affirmative action it won the last two times that it went but the supreme court is now trying to take that we'll see how it goes i was thinking about making a video about it if you guys want to know more especially if you're applying I feel like it's really important to know what is going on with the application and what affirmative action means so definitely let me know if you want that video down below and I will get to it I put down that I'm obviously from the UK but also I'm Sri Lankan I speak English and obviously that's my first language I'm fluent in that and then at the time and still now I speak read and write in French too so I realized I didn't put down Sinhalese which is my parents like mother tongue and I do speak that at home sometimes like half and half so make sure that you include all of the languages you can speak. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> that was a bit silly of me. Continuing with the theme of super silly things that I did, I forgot to write down that I did ASR. That's really silly. So if you're from America, A-levels are what you do at the end of high school in the UK and you sit these like big exams and they're very important. And so I wrote down that I did A-level French, history, mathematics, AS level for mathematics, and I did an EPQ, which was like a dissertation and I completely missed out that I did AS art. I'm not sure if it's because they had a maximum. So again, make sure you include all of your relevant information and don't be like me and not put down an entire subject that I studied at a high level. And a lot of you ask me about rank. Because I'm from the UK and my school didn't have a ranking system, it literally just says NA. So I can't really help you there, but I assume that if you're higher ranked, it will be looked upon favorably. You have five slots to put down honors and they can be national, regional or I think even like just within the school I would highly recommend putting things down here you'll see like my things are not super amazing the biggest one I had was the Sutton Trust I've mentioned them a ton and I'm gonna leave all of the information down below but TLDR if you're from the UK low income and first generation please 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 apply to this program because they single-handedly helped me get into Harvard I don't I wouldn't have been there if I didn't know them I would highly recommend applying to them I wrote them down and I mentioned specifically that I was one of 150 people chosen from over 1600 applicants. Really important that you put the biggest achievements up top and then list it in order of importance. The next thing I got was something at Model United Nations. I was a runner up for best delegate. Yeah, you guys might be thinking, oh, like I'm so much better. I was best delegate, blah, blah, blah. This is just showing that in my context, I had never done Model UN before. I also didn't have any practice or anything like that before I went to this Model UN. So for me, this was kind of like high key up big achievement. I'm not even gonna lie. I was really excited about it and I put it down. If you're sitting at home thinking, oh my gosh, like I haven't cured cancer or done anything, please just write something down. You probably have something like this. I put it down anyway because I didn't know what else to put down, to be honest. Next up, I have three that were just school awards. The Emily Wong Memorial Prize. I was awarded most dedicated musician in my entire school. And I think I've mentioned before, I played a bunch of instruments and I joined the orchestras. I'm not saying that I was a concert level musician or anything like that because I know no concert level musicians and I am nowhere near that level but I showed dedication and I was selected for this memorial prize which was really nice so I included that. I then got the silver treble clef award for six years service to school music and again this was because I showed dedication and I was in orchestra for my entire career in high school. I really liked it and I kept up with it because I liked it and the last thing was that pretty much every year of school I was selected as like a prize winner. I'm not sure if every school has this, but at my high school, they had something called prize winners, which is like, if you consistently did well in all of your different subjects, then they would elect you for this prize winner thing. And there were multiple in every class. So it wasn't super special, but it was something worth mentioning to show that I took my studies 
very seriously. I took the ACT. Here are my scores. You can see that I kind of did a little bit worse on the reading section, which brought my grade down. And yes, I only took the ACT once. I would say if you're trying to go for an Ivy or a really competitive school and you get above a 30, I would say that's probably fine. That was the advice I was given. If you're at 28, 29, maybe do it again and push yourself up. Don't keep retaking the test if you're consistently getting like 34 and you want to get 36. Unless you have like shitloads of money lying around, I feel like that's not necessary. A 34 is a good score. I got in with a 33, that's a very good score as well. Just chill. Yeah, you can see that I took the two subject tests and I actually didn't even submit my scores because I wasn't happy with them. Another thing is the SAT subject test became optional and I think a lot of schools are also turning the standardized testing optional too. Rule of thumb, if it looks good, then submit it. If it's not super good and you can show that your academics are good elsewhere, then don't worry about it. If it's a situation where you can't afford to take the test or it's just way out of reach, especially if you're an international, right? This isn't the stuff that we do in the UK, then definitely say something about that so that they know that's why you didn't take the test, not just that you couldn't be bothered to do it. They gave me my predicted grades. History, maths, French, further maths, and EPQ was predicted all A stars and then an A in my further math, which I studied on my own. That was also AS, which is why it was an A. Wow, I sound like I'm really trying to like hype up my academics. EPQ was an A star. Again, I didn't list my all A level, so I'm kind of, I'm just really confused, but it's okay. We we already spoke about that. So the big part of the Common App actually is extracurricular section, which is what a lot of you want to know about. I would really, really suggest following this rule, trying to find things that you started, so you're the founder of something, something that you did the best at, like maybe you won some award or you beat a million other people to something, and something that you've done for a long time. And a lot of you who message me, you're nervous that you don't have some amazing thing, or like someone mentioned Olympia and all of these opportunities, like you didn't do those or you didn't get that, it's fine. When I go through my activities, you'll see that some of them are just the most random things ever, but I did them for a long time. I showed dedication and that goes a long way. First things first, one thing I did found was this political art club. I helped seven younger years create work to do with political art and then it was put in the school newsletter and displayed around the school too. That was just a passion of mine and I founded that in year 12, so in my junior year of high school, which means I only did it for a year. But because I demonstrated passion, I think it went a really long way showing that this is something I'm really interested in. I was really privileged enough that I was able to take piano and violin lessons throughout my childhood. I used that and I joined the school orchestra and I played in it not just for recitals but I also did it for like plays and things like that. I also took the opportunity to learn the baritone and the tuba as part of this free initiative that they started in my borough. That showed that I was interested in seeking out opportunities and that's really key. If you have an opportunity to do something, do it. Why would you not do it? You know, just do it. Unless there's some big reason that you can't. It shows that you're taking opportunities with what you have access to. The next thing was some voluntary service. So I started teaching, when I was really young, I started teaching younger kids to help them get into grammar schools because I went to a grammar school in Northeast London. This turned into the next thing, which was a paid gig. I did this when I was a bit older. At this point, I was ready to, you know, go out and have fun in London. And I needed some extra cash to do that because I didn't want to burden my parents with that. I started to private tutor from home. This wasn't some legit business, you know? Like, I didn't have a website. I wasn't seeing hundreds of kids. I was seeing three kids. I wasn't getting paid like 500 pounds an hour. I was getting paid however much they wanted to give me, to be honest. Worth mentioning because it shows that I'm independent and I was working for myself. And you'll be surprised at how many people at Harvard like didn't do a job in high school. It's actually mind-blowing and can explain why some people are so entitled. Nevertheless, that is how the world is, I guess. I also mentored French in high school, helped other people who were struggling. And here are the random ones. I grew up Catholic. I was an altar server since my first Holy Communion. And I read from the Bible during mass. Yeah, I put that down. I thought this showed my relation to a community. And it's something I did for a really long time. And you can see that that's pretty random. I'm sure a lot of you guys have things in the community that you've been doing that you could include. So I did three different things, public speaking, debating, and model UN. I just, again, took opportunities when they came. There was a random public speaking thing that was put on like a bulletin and I signed up for it and I did it. There was also like a debate tournament. I literally went once. It was quite scary actually because everyone else had been debating for a long time. I fully just rolled in being like, I'm good at being argumentative, let's go. And that was interesting. And then I did Model UN again, just once. I also organized Model UN in my school and this was really fun. I got to work with the teachers to do that and it was worth mentioning. So I put that down. EPQ is an 
academic thing that I did, but it was completely of my own volition. I didn't have to do it, and it's actually not super common for people to do that, so I mentioned that, mainly because I wanted them to know what the topic was about, and it was about women's rights in Afghanistan. I did a lot of research into the topic to write this EPQ, and it shows my passions beyond simply sitting in class and doing work. It shows my passions in that academic space. The last thing I did was NCS, which if you're from the UK is literally a program that anyone can do. Basically, the government wants people to do things over the summer and give back to the community. So they bring you on this program and you meet a bunch of other people and then you serve your community. And that's all it was, anyone could have done it. I think I just put that to be honest, to fill out the 10 slots. You do things. If you wanna to go to these elite schools, I have no doubt in my mind that you guys are like actually doing things in your spare time. And these days there are so many other things. For example, if you have a TikTok where you're posting a lot of content about Black Lives Matter, or if you have an Instagram where you share photography, or if you've started a blog, there are so many things that you can list here. Don't be shy, show up, tell them all the amazing things that you do. I just wanted to quickly go through this because I think it's really interesting. Some of the things that I said, they asked me, how likely am I to change my plans? I put a five. I put that I'm very, very likely to change. And then when they asked about vocational plans, it was the same thing. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I put absolutely, I will change it. And pretty much the same for extracurriculars. Don't feel like you have to be knowing exactly what you want to do at college. You don't, they want you to come and grow and learn. You don't have to be stressed out about saying like, oh my gosh, I really don't know what I want to do there. They want you to come and change your course. That's actually really normal in America to change your major and to explore a bunch of things. It's kind of why we have the liberal arts education system. So I put down that the activities I was interested in were arts, student government, model UN, journalism, and orchestra. Now that I think about it, I actually did all of those things, aside from student government, I guess, but I did advocacy work in other things. I wrote down this little paragraph about how I founded this political art club, linking my application to the things I already mentioned. And I talked about how I like to help people who are younger than me and how I want to continue to do this in the future. From the messages I've been getting and from the people commenting on my videos, a lot of you are really scared to apply and scared that you're not gonna stand out from the crowd. And I hope that you know from watching this channel that I am not some brilliant superstar who went to the best like private school in London and whose parents paid for them to do every single extracurricular under the sun. That is not who I am. I was first gen when I applied. I was low income. I applied for full financial aid and I got it. And yeah, I just guess that's the kind of the end of the application. But I just want to let you guys know that wh wherever you are, whatever you're doing at school, just make the most out of every opportunity. That's what counts. What they're looking for is someone who can be a leader and to be a leader you need to show commitment, dedication, have things that you're passionate about. Having bucket loads of money next to you doesn't mean anything. I really do think that these days Harvard and other Ivy League schools do a good job of trying to make sure that they're letting every candidate have a fair shot. If anything, as I said with affirmative action, they're really trying to factor in reasons why maybe you can't do these things, whether it's because of your financial background or some other issue as well. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful Fall. There's actually not much the common app, which is kind of scary. I keep saying this, but please watch the admissions file video because that is where you can actually see how all of this translated. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please comment down below. I hope you guys have a really nice rest of your day and good luck with the applications. And okay, finally, goodbye. <laughs>